Telling the truth is dangerous given that criminals rule the world. It's more particularly dangerous given that those criminals have brainwashed millions of our own people to fight against those of us who tell the truth. Nonetheless, those who know the truth must teach African proverb. There are knowledge that's being deliberately kept from black people because doing so is necessary in order to keep black people within a collective state that aids the white society in maintaining its social dominance over black people. And black people's ignorance of this fact give the white society its greatest power over black people. Case, point, and proof. Currently, many black men believe that they're making an impactful statement when they declare themselves as being real niggers. But these black men are totally clueless of the fact that white social scientists intentionally attach the term real niggers to, onto a hyper-black masculinity in order to get black men to insist that they're real niggers. Irrespective of the underlying negative effect that the words actually have upon the subconscious minds of black people. The white prison industry is filled with black men that have been conditioned to insist that they're real niggers. White social engineering scientists are waging a covert war against black people that most don't understand. This is why those who know the truth must teach. The narrative that we African-Americans made the N-word ours and that using it now empowers us are both lies created by white propagandists to keep us from learning the truth. Those false narratives are believed and repeated by those that are ignorant, naive, and gullible. These types are usually the easiest victim of the white oppressor's fraudulent propaganda campaigns. It was actually white oppressive forces that socially engineered millions of African Americans to self-identify as niggers. Doing so conditions us to perceive ourselves through a false inherent inferior identity that aids the white society in maintaining its social dominance over our lives. It was achieved through negative media social engineering. Most people naively believe that the media reflects our reality, but in truth it's more often we that imitate what we see and learn from the media. A group's identity is shaped by how they repeatedly see themselves depicted within the media. People often become those derogatory media depictions of themselves that they've accepted as being their true reality. Therefore, whoever controls a people's media images controls their culture. It's a true science known as media social engineering. Because the white society controls the media images of African Americans, this fact allows white social scientists and propaganda de designers to negatively steer the black culture. Their ability to steer black culture through media social engineering is immensely powerful. So much, in fact, that if these um, if they wanted black youths to start walking around every day with a yellow Afro comb in their left rear pockets, all they would have to do is place that image in several rap music videos, movies and TV shows being depicted as very cool and trendy. In doing so, many of our black youths would then see the image imitated and then adopt the image as being their very own, although it's in fact not. The style and behavior was actually learned from what they repetitively saw them, how themselves depicted within the media. It was secretly created by white media social engineering scientists and propagandists. What many black people think are their own swagger are not their swagger, are the result of white social engineering. When these white social engineering scientists create trends and customs for black youths to imitate, they deliberately create those that get our black youths acting and dressing as caricatures that reinforces resentment and anti-black prejudice perceptions. 
Moreover, those images that reinforces many negative and racist stereotypes about black people. Black youths become those caricatures of derogatory images and stereotypes of themselves that they've accepted as being their reality. This was the same tactic used to socially engineer millions of African Americans to self-identify as niggers. Now, although the nigger programming is now routinely deployed through the white-controlled hip-hop industry, that industry merely reinforces an earlier programming. The nigger programming was originally indoctrinated into the African-American culture many decades long before the hip-hop music um, industry um, emerged. It was originally done so by using the movie industry. Most people think that movies are made for nothing more than entertainment. That never was the case. The greatest social messages are promoted through movies. Social norms promoted through films can influence the way of thinking and the cognitive map of a populated audience. In a normal conversation, when you're using logic and fact, your guard is naturally up. But when you're watching a movie, there's no debate. Your guard is down. The sensor part of your brain is not an action. It isn't saying, yes, I agree with this or I disagree with, um, with that, like you would in a debate or in a conversation. You're actually in an alpha state, being completely downloaded with ideas and images while watching the film. This programming system was used to condition millions of um, black movie watchers during the 1960s and 70s to call ourselves niggers. Up until the mid-1960s, the word nigger was viewed unfavorable by most African Americans. That era's generations of African Americans had experienced dehumanization, the um, segregation, and many, and many also had their grandparents that were born during slavery. Therefore, they knew intimately well the brutality and degradation that often accompanied the ugly taunt of the word nigger. Therefore, the usage of the word was most often forbidden within many African-American homes. It was deemed as being profoundly offensive. The usage of the word became accepted among um, African-American um, during the 1960s and early 70s as the popularity of the black exploitation films grew. Black exploitation um, is a term coined in the early 1970s to refer to black films that were aimed at black audiences, featuring African-American actors in lead roles. Uh, the films frequently depicted stereotypical characterization and a glorification of violence. It was that era's black exploitation films that first conditioned millions of African Americans on a national level to believe that it was trendy and a term of endearment to call ourselves niggers. In those films, those often written, directed, and produced by white people, um, black actors were hired to shuck and jive and repeatedly call themselves niggers. This nigger indoctrinating process was repeated and reinforced in countless times in many movies within these black exploitation films. Those black um, films were well received by many African-American audiences because they provided them with a cinematic black heroes on a silver screen in a portrayal unseen in most Hollywood pictures prior to that time. Therefore, African-Americans flocked to the theater in droves to see themselves being represented as heroes on the big screen. Many black audiences believing that those fictional movie characters uh, were true, were a true representation of our group as a collective, began imitating what we saw on the screen. This included self-identifying ourselves as niggers. Through this um, media social engineering system, Millions of African Americans were socially engineered to believe it is acceptable to call themselves niggers. Words have power. They put a spell on your subconscious mind. And here's why the conditions call themselves niggers. 
To subjugate and control a targeted population, the first step is to neutralize their alpha males, aka those possessing warrior spirits. These are also the males that are psychologically wired to protect their communities and their women. White social scientists neutralize the black alpha male by socially engineering millions to self-identify ourselves as niggers. They did this to us because words, when repeated often enough, have immense power over the subconscious mind. Repeated words shapes our thoughts. And a thought held long enough by a word repeated often enough becomes a belief. A belief then becomes your biology. We psychologically become the words that we repeatedly call ourselves. This is why men that call themselves thugs are more likely to engage in a fight than to avoid one. It's also why women that proclaim themselves as being bitches often become stubbornly unreasonable. It's also the reason why over 90% of black men who are sagging are also the same ones calling themselves niggers. They sag because they think they're niggers and sagging is how niggers dress. We subconsciously function based upon the words we repeatedly call ourselves. It's a psychological phenomenon that white social scientists have thoroughly researched. When we repeatedly call ourselves niggers, this conditions us to perceive ourselves through a false inherent subordinate identity that aids the white society in maintaining its social dominance over us. When we call ourselves niggers, this also separates us from our unifying African heritage. Without having a base identity to connect ourselves, over time, we become further fragmented and we become weaker as a people. We can then be made into anything the one oppressors wants us to be. Self-identifying ourselves as niggers also psychologically divides us from our native Africans. When Africans are divided globally, we lose our global numerical advantage and loses all hopes of defeating global white supremacy. Calling each other by um, niggers, also, we also dehumanize each other when we do so. This makes it much easier to mistreat and even kill each other. This is a fact that the military has known for centuries. Case, point, and proof. During the Vietnam War, to ease the American soldiers' anxieties about torturing and killing the, the, the Viet Cong soldiers, the Vietnamese soldiers, they were taught to refer to them as chinks, gooks, and kongs. This to humanize them and made it easier to kill and torture them. This is also why men who refer to women as bitches and hoes have a higher tendency to mistreat women. A man who never calls a woman out her name has a lesser tendency of doing so. This is also the reason why white oppressive forces socially engineer millions of African Americans to self-identify ourselves as niggers through negative media social engineering. It makes it easier for us to kill each other. Have you ever closely listened whenever a black man speaks of a previous fight against another black man? As he presents the details of the fight, he will say, uh, I hit that nigger, I kicked that nigger, I shot that nigger, etc. The term that nigger is being used to dehumanize the other black man. If you then ask the speaker to retell the details of the fight between himself and the other black man, however, replacing the term that nigger with my brother or the, that black man, he will find it psychologically difficult to repeat the story. The more brutal that he fought, the more difficult it becomes to tell the story without dehumanizing the opponent. He may even become angry for being asked to tell the story without being able to dehumanizing his opponent. 
When we assign negative words upon someone or another, we dehumanize them, which makes it easier to mistreat them. What oppressive forces have placed an elaborate self-deprecating spell upon the minds of black people with the word nigger? The white prison industry is also filled with black men that have been programmed to believe that they're real niggers. White social engineering scientists deliberately program millions of black men to believe that they're real niggers to achieve this objective. Words do have power over the subconscious mind. Many African Americans are now saying that we should call ourselves niggers, N-E-G-U-S. It's an Ethiopian, it's an ancient Ethiopian word meaning king. However, given that there are literally thousands of languages and dialects in Africa, more than 2,000, and each one of them have at least three words that mean king or ruler. Now, don't you therefore find it suspicious that the only one of those many thousands of words being spread into our communities is the word niggers, N-E-G-U-S, the one that just happens to sound exactly like niggers, N-I-G-G-E-R-S? To believe that this is merely an incredible coincidence is extremely naive. The ignorant, naive, and gullible are always the easiest victim of the white man's propaganda campaigns. As I said, Africa literally has thousands of words in dialect that also means king. Now here's the reason why the only one we're hearing is niggers, N-E-G-U-S. Millions of African Americans were deliberately socially engineered to call themselves niggers by white oppressive forces because it negatively affects us at a subconscious level. The word niggers, N-I-G-G-A, and N-E-G-U-S are being misused by, um, to keep African Americans functioning based upon the negative effects created by the original N-word because the subconscious mind doesn't see the different spelling. A nigger by any spelling is still a nigger. Brothers and sisters, it is time for us to wake up. We African Americans are more susceptible to negative media social engineering because we were stripped of our true identity and culture during the enslavement of our ancestors. While we read our Bible believing it will protect us, white oppressive forces study instead how to manipulate the minds of large targeted population. They then use that gained knowledge to mentally enslave millions of black people. And when those of us who are awoke try to teach the others, that we're told to shut up and just keep reading our Bibles. That's our situation. Our reality is the white oppressors are playing chess and black people are not even playing checkers. Black people are playing hopscotch. It is time to wake up to our reality. One love and peace.